Gladys Pasternak and Carlos wouldn't let me in. Carlos? Apparently, they voted last night to make him the security guard, according to Gladys. In my absence, they voted to ban all healthcare workers from the building who work directly with COVID patients. I don't fucking believe this. Well, believe it. I'm not making this shit up. They don't have the legal authority to do that, Stephen. It's completely discriminatory. You are a shareholder in the corporation. You know what? You come home, you meet me in the lobby, I'll fucking hurt somebody. I swear to God. Mallory, come on. What? What I will. That goddamn Gladys Pasternak. You know what? I'm just gonna go to Joe's. Where? I'm gonna go to my brother's. I'm exhausted, Mel. I've been in the ICU for the last 15 hours. I just, I don't have the energy to confront them right now. Well, we're gonna have to deal with this, Stephen. We will. Just relax for now, okay? Take an out of it. I don't like Ativan. Sweetheart, I told you the board didn't even meet last night. Well, then how on earth did Carlos get to be the building security guard? I have no idea, Mallory. He and Gladys Pasternak wouldn't even let my husband in the building this morning. Crazy. I mean, can you believe it? Look, all I know about Carlos is that I didn't get my fresh direct order until well after 10, and I know it was delivered before 8 because I called the helpline to complain because I like to do my yoga in the morning. You know, first thing, it, just to give some order to the day, you know? And yet here I am, standing at my kitchen sink, wiping all the fucking lipid envelopes off of the grapes, and it's almost noon. I mean, the whole idea that he would be stopped from coming into the building because he is a doctor is absurd. I know. After working for 18 straight hours, that goddamn Gladys, I'd like to just throttle her. I, I hope something terrible happens to her. She gets COVID. Oh, no, you don't. Yes, yes, yes I do. Yes, I do. No, look. I know Gladys is a pill, but she's been the president of the co-op board for the past 22 years. Well, it's time for her to go, don't you think? But nobody else wants to be president. I mean, we can hardly find enough people to serve on the board. She's just freaking out, Mal. Everybody in the city is freaking out, which is why I wanted to go up to Vermont. Chloe, please don't talk to me about your fucking country house. Oh, yeah. Well, okay. But our neighbors up there, no, they're from Park Slope, okay? And they told us that the locals are becoming very hostile to New Yorkers. It's like they think we're bringing the virus up there with us. Well, duh. Hello. That's true. Well, it, it, they still don't have to be so rude and mean about it. It's like they're threatening people. With guns, that is not right. Of course, I agree with that. <laughs> Regardless, I would have left like a week ago, but Charlie, Charlie's got that priesthood thing stuck like way up his ass. So he wants to stay here and, and martyr himself. Martyr me. I'm not having it. I can hear every fucking word you're saying about me, Chloe. I, well, that's what you get for eavesdropping, Charles Tuttle. Do I dismiss outright your vocation as a theater actress? Aww. Do I tell you uh, how, how, how ridiculous and futile your life endeavor actually is? Well, excuse me, Charlie, but I'm Jewish. I am well aware. Well, okay, it's one thing to marry an Episcopalian, but I simply must put my foot down about this priesthood thing. I don't understand you. Well, you know what I'm saying, though, don't you? Mal, uh, this priesthood thing is it just too weird. 
But you want to know what I think? I think it's cruel the way you dismiss my religion the way you do. And what I feel in my heart I am called to do. Don't you want me to be fulfilled? Well, Don't you want me to be happy? Um, uh, Mel, um, I'm going to have to go, okay? Well, of course I want you to be happy. Charlie, I do. And stop discussing our personal affairs with the, all the neighbors all the time. I'm sorry. It's so humiliating. No, I'm sorry. I, I just, I really, really don't want you to become a priest. Why? Well, because those clergy people, all of them, no matter what religion, they're, they're just all so creepy and sanctimonious, Charlie. And they're worse than the people in AA. Not all of them. Charlie, yes, they are. All of them. I mean, it's not just an ongoing self-improvement seminar with those people. No, they actually think God tells them stuff. But I feel called. Stop saying that. Jesus, I can't. Hey! Hey! I didn't think you'd still be here. Uh, me neither. I thought you were in Vancouver. They canceled my show. Oh no. Yeah. I worked my entire adult life to have the opportunity to get a pilot shot. And then a plague springs up out of a wet market in China somewhere and ruins everything. The theaters closed last Thursday. Hollywood is completely shuttered now. And our whole industry Ended in like three days. Horrible. And my subletter came over yesterday. I had to pay him to go away. Oh? I'm not going to Vancouver if I'm not shooting my show. What am I going to do in Vancouver? Oh, well, there are lovely walks there, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and you know how part of the subleasing policy of this building is that we have to make an advance payment of a quarter of the yearly rent that we would make from a subletter to the building? Right. I paid $9,000 to the board as of two weeks ago. $9,000. That's $3,000 for three months. I know I could have made more, but who needs to be greedy? I had already rented an apartment in Vancouver. Half my crew was already there, for fuck's sake. We had no idea it was going to go down like this. No one did, Jonah. And to add insult to injury, Gladys Pasternak is saying she's not going to give me my money back. What? Yeah. She said that she's going to bring it up at the next board meeting, but that she thinks it was a non-refundable fee. Th that's absurd. Mm. She's so evil. She is a cunt. Don't even get me started on her, Jono. <sighs> she tried to keep my husband from coming into the building this morning after he worked all night, all because he treats COVID patients. What? Yeah. <laughs> I've called her like 15 times, emailed her, knocked on her door, nothing. But don't worry about your money, Jono. We'll get it back for you. Yeah. I've got to go to the market. You want anything? No, no. I'm just going to go upstairs and get drunk alone. I'm not really going to do that. What? <laughs> what are you going to go rob a bank? Well, it's serious, Jono, actually. You should be wearing something, too. Stephen said they need all the masks for the hospital, or I'd give you a real one, but I'll make you one of these. You think I'm going to need one? Yes, I do, Jono. You've got to educate yourself about this. Is it going to get bad? Yep. Stephen says, look at Italy, and in about a month, that's what New York is going to look like. Miss! What? I, I got you a kosher chicken. Yeah, I see. It, 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 Benny. That's really great, but I never asked you for a kosher chicken. You said you're going up to Broadway. Can you get me anything? And I asked you for one thing, toilet paper. Yes, I know, but they didn't have any. Well, of course not. Zabar's never has toilet paper. Did you go to um, um, Best Side Market? Yes, but I left. <laughs> no one was properly socially distancing, Midge. Oh, what about price-wise? Out. Oh, God. Who are these fucking... 
people who are hoarding all this fucking toilet paper. I ask you, it's a good thing I got my masks during swine flu epidemic. Also, I might add that there were many people in their midst during the senior citizens shopping hour who were not, and let me repeat that, who were not senior citizens. Oh, how utterly unstocking. And I complained to the manager about it too. Well, what'd they say? Well, she said to come back tomorrow morning, first thing at 6.30 when they're open. There's a limit to one roll per customer now. No. But you know what? What? Let me run upstairs. I'll spot you a couple rolls. That would be fabulous, Betty. Thank you. And you know what? I'll leave you um, a couple of oatmeal raisin cookies outside oh. the door. I made them. I disinfect everything so they're very clean, but they might taste like Lysol just a little bit. It, but aside from that, they're fabulous. Okay. Okay. They're my favorite, by the way. Oh, good. I never made them before. Bye. Okay, bye. Thank you. Bye. Oh, thank God. Hi. Yoga? Actually, yeah. So you're just gonna, you're just gonna do yoga. Like, today is just like any other day. Yeah, I am. Yeah. Even though I got a late start, thanks to Carlos, I am going to do yoga today just like every other day. Exactly. Because you know why? Try it. It makes me feel calm. Okay, and just a little less crazy. Why, why is that a problem? I don't Honestly. have any problem. I, I, I just... <laughs> whatever. What? There's just so much you could do. There are so many ways you could help other people right now, Chloe. Well, I don't need your advice on how to spend my time, frankly. I just want to make sure we don't have any regrets about how we spend this time. I'm sorry, Charlie. I'm, I'm sorry that your life isn't what you wanted it to be. It's yours? No. But I accept it. And you know, I know that the most money that I ever made as an actress was from doing that douche commercial. And I spent years, I'll admit it, doing readings and workshops of new plays and basement theaters all over New York, a couple in London, LA. But you know what? I accept it. I, I even like my life. I do. Even though I know you think I shouldn't, I do. Now for you, on the other hand, you have this great career in finance and you hated it. You quit. You went to teacher's college. You're teaching at this fancy prep school. And now you become disenchanted with that, and you want to become an Episcopal priest? You know what? Fine. Go do it. You have my blessing. But um, this time, this time, when you have your second midlife crisis, just leave me out of it. I just want to do some good, Chloe. I just want to feel like I'm. Doing something good. Like in a platonic sense. Well, you've always done good, Charles Tuttle. I can't convince you of that. So go on. Down to your homeless shelter. Fine. Just, I just can't go with you. Okay? I'm going to stay here. I'm going to do some yoga. And then cook. And then, you know what, I'm going to make some masks. Yeah, Mallory said that the hospital staff is running out of PPE in a matter of days. So that's what I'm doing to help. Sounds good. Okay. Have fun. What the fuck, man? 
I am not going to stand here and watch you eat that shit. Joseph, you eat bagels all the time. No, no, no. Yes, you do. Not after spending a whole night in that toxic waste dump of a hospital. Yeah, well, what did you eat last night? Folic acid. You planning on getting pregnant, Joseph? Fuck you, dude. And I put a little echinacea in here and some elderberry. Oh my God, all that hocus pocus bogus bullshit. Natural antivirals, dude. Uh-huh. I'm gonna outlive your fucking ass, bro. Yeah, well, we'll see. <sighs> I need to go take a shower. Steven? No, it's Joe. Oh, hello, Joe. I can't believe I still get you guys confused. Well, it's not your fault. I answered his phone, so you get a free pass. <laughs> uh, is Steven there? No, he's still sleeping, dude. Oh, no. I'm at Fairways. Um, could I bring you guys anything? Oh, that's sweet. No, I think I'm good. I'm just mostly eating sprouts these days anyways. You know, some broccoli, wheatgrass, soy. There's no cure for this fucking disease, right? So it's all on our immune system. Gotta eat well, eat raw. <laughs> okay, so you're good. Yeah, well, I, you know what, actually, since you're swinging by anyways, uh, why don't you get me some kombucha? Okay. Oh, okay. you know what? what? Bring me a roast chicken. All right. Yeah. Oh, oh, wait, did you say you're at Fairway? Not Zabar's, right? Right. Ah, oh, dude, they have this amazing mac and cheese. It's in the prepared food section. It looks ugly as fuck. It's like a brick, but it's delicious. It's like covered with aluminum. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thanks. Oh, and a Coke. You sure about the Coke, Joseph? Yeah, I'm sure. You know, you sounded exactly like my mother just now. <laughs> ah, I feel so guilty. All right, all right. Ixnay on the Coke. <laughs> okay. How are you anyway, Joey? I'm, uh, I'm good, you know as well as any of us can be during this, right? I've been uh, floating around some ERs. What else am I gonna do? I'm a plastic surgeon. But uh, I, I was at University Hospital last night with Steven. Well, those guys are alleged to be smart. But it was a shit show over there. <laughs> they are as stupid and inept as the vast majority of us. What are you gonna do? It's all Nirvana, right? What? According to my guru, once you reach a certain point of enlightenment, everything up to that point you realize has been nirvana. Oh, I get it. You do? <laughs> well, then you must be very enlightened. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Joey, if Stephen gets up, just tell him to call me if he wants anything, okay? Okay, ciao. Hello. Dude, hey. Hey. It's Charlie. <laughs> yes, I know. So, uh, I know you are Episcopalian. Yes. And I was wondering if uh, maybe I could behoove you to go up to the homeless mission at St. Michael's and distribute some food boxes with me. Uh, let me think about that. Um, no. Oh, okay. Uh, Look, Charlie, I had a conversation about this with Mallory earlier, and... Then I did a perfunctory bullshit online search about it, and this shit is serious. I can literally check off every box of the high-risk category. Cardiac disease, I don't have it, but my dad had it, so family history, check. High blood pressure, check. Pre-diabetes, check. Age, almost. So, no, I cannot go and feed the homeless with you. I'm literally barricading myself in my apartment right now. I upgraded my Spectrum account, and I've just accepted a $400 delivery from Whole Foods. So, okay. Um, I really just wanted a little company, you know? So, uh, that might be fun. Yeah, yeah. Would have been. Would have been. Uh, hey, uh, maybe later you can come over. We can have a socially distant glass of wine. Cool. <sighs> I hate to bother you with this stuff, Stephen, because I know you're so swamped at work. Yeah. 
well, but there are some issues that have come up in the building that are very concerning to some of the residents. And well, we were hoping that the board could meet tomorrow instead of next week. I can't attend a fucking meeting right now, Benny. Well, uh, perhaps we could Zoom or Skype or FaceTime you in so we could get some of these issues resolved. Because lately there's been a lot of concern about health and safety. Steven, it's very important, you know that. So during this pandemic, I propose we, we want just one person in the elevator at a time and also no gatherings in any unit of more than five people. You know the Carmichaels? They've had two different parties in the past three weeks. I mean, who are these fucking people? I know, I know. Yeah, plus the real estate guys, they're gonna go take a hit. <clears throat> but on the bright side, with the interest rates so low, this might be a good time to refinance our mortgage. Right. And, um, Stephen? One last thing. Gladys Pasternak, you know, she really wants to have a real conversation about what we should do about the tenants who are healthcare workers and providing treatment to coronavirus patients. A real conversation, huh? Well, I, I don't think she's being unreasonable, being that the disease is so highly contagious. And, well, Gladys, she made some very salient points about a kind of quarantine. I can't believe you're taking her side on this, Benny. You know what? I, I don't have time for this. Go fuck yourself. Fuck. What did he say? I think Gladys made several salient points in favor of quarantining me and Dr. Berenson. God damn them. We should fucking sue their asses. Oh, man. I, I have to get going back to work, honey. Thank you so much for this food. I really appreciate it. It's working. Press audio. Press audio. Press audio. Audio? There Is that, you can you hear me? That's it. It's working? Oh, God, this is neat. Yeah. Oh, first, listen, I cannot thank you enough for all that toilet paper. Where did you get that? Georgia? Oh, no, it's Georgia Pacific, Mitch. It's the brand. I ordered it from Amazon. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, of course, 40 rolls. Oh, la, la. I never have to buy another roll of toilet paper as long as I live. Oh, my God. Don't say that, Mitch. Jesus. No, no I can be very economical. So, listen, sweetheart, when we have this board meeting, mm -hmm. the emergency board meeting tomorrow morning, we have to do it on Zoom and you have to run it because I don't know how. I would, but I, don't, I can't. Okay. Okay. Um, because we need to get used to this, this self sequestration thing. I mean, for me, it's really not going to be much of a problem because I'm a little agoraphobic, so I'm not going anywhere. Okay, fine. Yeah. Now, Gladys has a big B in her knickers about doctors in the building. What to do about this issue, I know not. Now, I don't want to offend anyone, but... Yeah, well, as of about four this afternoon... Stephen resigned from the board and he wants Mallory to replace him. Oh, no, 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 not a good, not a good idea. No. Why? What? Oh, God, no. She's a lawyer. I don't like having lawyers on the board. They think they know everything and they spend the whole time trying to explain to everybody else how they know everything. So tiresome. Oh. Oh, and then, of course, I don't want to piss Mallory off. She might take after her uncle, Carmine the Weasel Catalano. Who? <laughs> He's a major monster up in Boston. What? Major. Not as bad as Whitey Bulger, but really, he <sighs> killed people. He's been in prison. Oh, my God. Yeah. He might be her great uncle, but still. How do you know this? I Google searched her. I Google search everyone in the building, don't you? No. I saw the Romeo and Juliet review. That was 25 years ago. Yeah. So? In Hartford. Well, yeah, I'm sure it must still be very painful. <sighs> Lattice. Oh, she is another one. Oh, boy. <laughs> what about her? So Gladys's father was a cantor at Temple Emmanuel, and he was married to a lovely woman who was one of those, you know, Upper East Side Park Avenue German 
Jewish family. They had two beautiful little girls and he was a nothing from the South or something. So he goes to visit uh, Mobile or Memphis or wherever it is he's from. And he meets this blonde, beautiful model airline stewardess, Shiksa, who seduces him and gets pregnant and gets him to leave his family for her. And Gladys is the progeny of that. Oh. What? Well, I just, I, I wish I'd known that before. God, I, I suddenly feel so sorry for her. I don't feel sorry for her. I don't feel sorry for anyone who has money. Oh, she tries to tell me how sad she is because Walter went down to Palm Beach. But you know, everyone knows they have a sham marriage. They've always had a sham marriage. He's been going out on her for years. Oh, she's so miserable. Yeah, I, mean, I don't feel sorry for her. In her duplex penthouse. You know what? I'm going to go. Oh, no, wait, I forgot. You're for money. You don't seem like you're for money, Chloe, at all. You don't. You don't. What, Chloe, you don't seem like you're for money. Ah. Carlos, what the fuck is going on? I, I, I came to help Mr. Pashnak hang a mirror, and uh, I, 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 I ran downstairs to get the, um, the, the anchors because it, it was really heavy. And um, and I came back upstairs, and, and, and she jumped out the window, man. Uh, she, uh, she committed suicide. She killed herself. <laughs>